Hi, it's Prime here from Niche Advice. Hope you're well. Um, I set up this channel to talk about mortgages, but mortgages are linked to lots of different things. And unfortunately, we are all linked in the house buying process to estate agents. Okay, and do you know what? You've I, we've been dealing with lots and lots of estate agents. In fact, we've been um, you know I've been involved with estate agents in seas in the past, and I know many estate agents that I deal with, and many of my clients are actually estate agents. So I've got nothing against them, but there are some dirty tricks some estate agents play on clients and developers, not just estate agents. So um, so let's talk about some of those tricks, really. Uh, some of the things to watch out for. Some of the things that I see constantly from my clients. Number one, oh sorry, we can't we can't talk to you until um, you've spoken to our mortgage broker. Uh, we can't we can't uh, you know accept your offer until you've spoken to our mortgage broker. Well, really, if you've given them an agreement in principle, they should not be doing that. They should not be saying that because it means you've sought advice and you've actually got an agreement in principle. Um, now, I could understand it if it was an agreement in principle directly by the lenders because half of those things um, haven't been vetted by the lenders and it's just a computer system. But if it's an agreement in principle by a mortgage broker, then really they should be accepting that because it means that they've done and the mortgage broker has done some due diligence and has given you, in their professional opinion, and the lender's opinion and agreement and principle. So be warned, be warned when they start playing tricks like that. Second one, they will not take the property off the market until they see a survey. This is the one that I get quite often now. When things are heating up, obviously estate agents have got multiple, multiple people they're selling to. And one of the ways what they're saying to our clients at the moment, uh, many of our clients is, we're not going to take the property off the market until the survey has been booked. So what happens is, puts the clients in a complete panic, okay? Because the clients got their agreement in principle, they're now gathering their documentation for application, but they need to get that survey booked. So uh, a couple of things to watch out for. There are lenders out there that will instruct survey straight away. So before they even look at the application, they'll instruct the survey straight away, okay? so. If that is the case, then we may have to look at that type of lender, okay? If you're literally going to lose the property, uh, so we can look at that. But um, there are some lenders that we have to go to, for example, because of affordability, because of their income profile, um, because of their credit profile and so forth, that will wait to underwrite first, okay, and then instruct the survey. Right, so that could be a problem, and it's you know you've got clients running around sending emails. Oh my God, I'm going to lose the property. So one of the ways around it is you know you could get those lenders that have to wait. You have to wait. You could ask them, or you could via the broker. You could say, look, I know it's going to cost three hundred pounds. I'm happy to lose that three hundred pounds should the case not go forward, but I need to book that survey. So. It does happen and we do sort of instruct it and as long as you guys know you know there could be all sorts of problems still your case has not been accepted it's only been partially accepted if it's past this agreement in principle an underwriter is now going to review it and there could be a chance you could lose the property but that's another trick estate agents are playing now i'm seeing more and more they're not taking properties off the market until surveys being instructed um not necessarily knowing the process because you know like i said you could literally put the application in and book a survey. It doesn't mean that you've been accepted. And and I think they're looking at that more sim simplistically. If I, was a sh if I was a shrewd estate agent, I would ask who the lender is and I would then know what the process is, okay? So different, like I said, different lenders have a different process for instructions. And just because you've been, uh, you've instructed a survey doesn't mean you are a better case than someone who hasn't. Um, so that's another one. Um, another one that I'm getting with the state agents is trying to contact us, the mortgage brokers, directly to find out what's happening with the client. Um, we work for you uh, under data protection. Really, they shouldn't be contacting us about gauging opinions about where we think the case is. Um, so, you know, please be aware of this. Some agents. Uh, have been known to do that. Uh, another one is certainly when you're dealing with help to buy a new developers, pushy tactics, pushy, pushy tactics. There's always another buyer. There's always somebody else who's willing to take on the property. So what I've found is when you're dealing with uh, certainly the people that are in the sales departments of the new new developers, um, just just the way you interact with the clients. If it's a new build development on a help to buy maybe, or a client that's buying with a, from an estate agent, 
what I find is the more pushier, the more aggressive tactics seems to be coming from the developers. Okay, so although I've just you know rubbish some of these data agents out there, um, I think the developers are actually more worse when it comes to the my experience from how the clients are behaving and how nervous the clients are and what sort of situation they've put the clients into. So, be warned, guys. Um, and and I suppose this is the overall sort of thing. You know, it's not the end of the world sometimes when you lose property, okay? Um, and I know it's a heated market right now, certainly. I mean, I've got my friends that are looking to buy properties and they're saying, look, Payam, every time we're going to see a property, there's like 13 other people. And, you know, we've got to be ready. You know, we've got to get our agreement and principle. So this is the this is the moral of the story. Get yourselves ready, okay? So often I send out quotes to clients. We have this discussion. We have We send the quotes. These are the documents that I need. And all of a sudden, they go, oh, yeah, well, we haven't found something yet. We'll come back to you when we find something. Guess what? They find something next week, and the agents wants this, 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 and they haven't got anything ready. So they're rushing around and expecting us to put them right at the top of the pile where we told you. We said, look, get this ready. Get it ready. Get yourself worked out. Get all your documentation ready. Get a broker to review it. Let's look at your bank statements. Let's look at your proof of deposit. Let's get you in a position where when the estate agents and the selling agents are putting this pressure on, you can go back to them and bat them back and go, here's my agreement in principle. Here's my solicitor details. Here's my broker details. I'm ready. I'm in a position to buy rather than willy-nilly sort of thinking about things and, and then all of a sudden having to move on things uh, you know, straight away. So anyway, guys, I hope you found this useful. Uh, if you have, obviously, like and subscribe and let me know what, you, what experiences you've had from estate agents. Take care. The content of this video does not constitute giving advice. It's purely for information purposes. All cases should be discussed with a professional mortgage broker. As a mortgage is secured against your home or property, it could be repossessed if you do not keep up mortgage payments. Niche advice is authorized and regulated by the Financial Conduct Authority.